Hi everyone, welcome back to another Saturn Day. We've taken a look at the Model 1 North American Launch Model Controller. We've taken a look at the vastly superior Model 2 Sega Saturn Controller, which was also the launch model and only model that was released over in Japan. Why they decided to give us our own exclusive one, I'll never know. So now what I want to do is I want to talk about the next evolution of controllers for the Sega Saturn. And it's kind of amazing because the Sega Saturn was so short-lived, debuting in 1995, pretty much discontinued by late 1997, early 1998. Yet there were actually three official controllers for this platform. And the next one is this one. That one right there. This is the 3D control pad. And what you see here is basically the entire lineup of officially, well, I was going to say licensed controllers, whatever, for the Sega Saturn. So let's go ahead and pull this one up and take a look at what makes it tick, what makes it unique. Well, first off, let's move these off to the side so that you get a good look at this. So right away, interesting, look at the buttons. They're no longer like these two controllers in that the XYZ buttons are smaller. Now they're all the same. You can still pull off really easily moves, things like that. You have one start button here. You'll notice if I zoom in really close, you have a plus and a circle. What's that all about? Well, the plus is for the D-pad. And you'll notice that the D-pad is pretty much the exact same D-pad as featured on this bad boy. But then the circle, if you look close, sorry, there's some condensation for my hand, triggers the analog stick. So let's go and take a look at this analog stick here. You'll see this is quite a bit different than what Sony and Microsoft, excuse me, Sony and Nintendo were offering at the time. When Sony came up with the DualShock, they put their DualShock down here. So they had the two analog sticks down here. Nintendo had the weird thing where they, you know, there was the, the three prongs and they were, had their one analog stick. But this analog stick is quite unique. It really, really is. It feels quite nice in the hands. The only thing is, if you notice, it actually turns this way for some weird reason. I, I wish it was a little firmer there because in terms of the actual rotation here of moving it around feels fantastic actually i just wish that it wouldn't turn like this now it's very possible that this is just my controller because this is the original one i got with nights into dreams many many years ago so it's a very simple design you see it's got you know this nice circular body here nice like a saturn logo and you got the two prongs on the sides and now we're going to flip it around so you can really get a good look at it. Look at what they did. Interesting, no? So we have again this sort of thing like this, except they went and they made almost like handles for you to hold on. And look at this. Triggers. Very first console that I can think of. I might be wrong. Someone out there proved me wrong. That has triggers making for racing games 3d racing games are perfect on this bad boy now interestingly enough there's even an expansion port see this little tab here if i pull that i can remove the cord i'm going to just for this sake and it's almost like they wanted to use this for something else maybe for an extension of uh, making this longer maybe I, I have no idea maybe some sort of expansion bay for something else but Pretty cool stuff, man. If only the Saturn had lasted longer, I'm pretty sure we would have even got another model of this particular controller. So that's pretty much it for this controller, but I want to show you something else interesting. Because this design, which we all refer to as like the spaceship, it looks like something out of Star Trek, going to come around. I'm going to put this back in. Does this look somewhat familiar to you? Well, it should, because this was very, very clearly the influence for this. Very, very, I mean, come on. If you've never seen the 3D control pad before, take a look at this. It's evident where this came from. I mean, my goodness, 
You even have the circular design still left in it here. You still have the two prongs, you come back, you've got the exact same trigger system that you have here. And except, of course, you know, for the VMU, the rumble pack, and things of that nature. So it, it's interesting to see how this evolved. And i got to be honest, I do like this analog stick. I think it is a very good analog stick. And it's clear that this was, like, the evolution of this, that they didn't need this giant one. Although, like I say, it works fantastically well. It's just this does feel a little bit more comfortable. But this was a step down. This was a step down. But... Again, we're not talking about that today. Just wanted to show you influences. So this was a really good controller, and it's just it's really unfortunate that it never really got a chance to be used by the masses. A lot of people played it with Nights into Dreams, and you can actually pick this bad boy up for relatively cheap these days. Now, something I want to note is there are actually some games that are not compatible with this game. Winning Post is one of them. If you play Winning Post with this, you won't even be able to play the game. For whatever reason, even if you have it set to D-pad mode, it, it does not work. Now, that's an interesting sort of feature in and of itself, wouldn't you say? Is the fact that you actually switch between analog and D-pad, meaning that if the Saturn was around long enough, you wouldn't have been able to use both, which is kind of neat. It's kind of interesting to see how that, you know, evolved, because... Well, you know, today we have analog sticks and you flip like a D-pad. It acts as four different buttons typically for weapon selections and things like that. That wouldn't have been possible with this controller, which is kind of neat. Well, that's pretty much it. And you know what? I might actually be wrong. Maybe you, they could have. Maybe this was simply to tell you for the main input device and maybe this would have been a secondary, uh, secondary feature. So anyways, guys, that's pretty much it. That wraps up the, the look at the very cool... Sega Saturn, the three controllers that were made for the Saturn. This is all of them. This is the most expensive one that's on the market. This is the most commonly available. And this one, too, I'd say is the mo more commonly available. You can pick this one for really, really cheap. But uh, if I had to pick one, this is my favorite. This is the one I use all the time, and I love it. But for 3D games, this is definitely the one to go to. It makes playing 3D games a lot easier because of the analog stick. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this look at the Sega Saturn controllers. That wraps up part three. And maybe I can check out a few other peripherals. Why don't you suggest some that you'd be interested in checking out? All right, guys, next week we're back with more video game reviews.